I made a hundred racks off a of Bitcoin. Off of Bitcoin. You could catch me trapping with a Bitcoin. With a Bitcoin. You could catch me running up the Bitcoin. Yeah. I spent six thousand on a Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Ooh. Bitcoin. I got Bitcoins. Welcome to Bitcoin News Today on the 16th of October 2018. I'm James and in today's episode I've got a Bitcoin trading strategy for you so definitely stay tuned to this episode. But first, Fidelity has launched institutional an institutional platform for Bitcoin and Ethereum. So Fidelity Investments is a well-known name and they are bringing cryptocurrencies to institutional investors with their latest product called Fidelity Digital Assets. It's a company based in Boston in the USA and it's providing enterprise grade custody solutions, a cryptocurrency trading execution platform and institutional advising services 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So they are um, investing in Bitcoin trading technology to allow institutional investors to start trading Bitcoin. So if institutions are interested in trading Bitcoin, maybe you should be too, just a suggestion. So how do you trade Bitcoin? Let's look at the Bitcoin chart. Now you need to understand any chart and you need to understand what the price action is doing in order to profit from any kind of trading. So here's a quick rundown and I'm going to give you a trading strategy that you can use very simply. So first of all, we just need to know that the Bitcoin price did reach a all time high in uh, the 16th of December was the all time high at $19,891 per Bitcoin. And then we've seen quite a big correction so far this year. And with this correction, we've seen lower highs each time uh, as these have come down. And we've seen pretty much a straight line when it comes to the lows. Uh, but more recently, we have seen higher lows. As you can see, it's gone from 5,900 to 6,116, a little bit further down there. And the latest one was at approximately 6,048. Um, so pretty straight on the lows and the highs have been coming down until we did get a breakout. So it's always helpful to draw the, um, the line. So you can use this drawing tool to see if there are any particular shapes that may be of interest and to mark on the uh, support and resistance lines in particular. So we did see this kind of triangle which is called a uh, descending triangle and recently we have seen a breakout. So there was a breakout attempt on the 8th of October that uh, pretty much failed and then we got a bounce off that resistance line and today on the 15th actually yesterday we did see a big bounce and it went through that resistance line and then bounced back and we've remained outside of this uh, triangle shape which is excellent news and this could suggest that the price could go higher now another thing worth knowing is the um, the RSI that I've got on the graph here which stands for the Relative Strength Index and you can click through the link in the video description to go to my chart on TradingView where you should see hopefully all of this set up but if not just go to Indicators at the top search for RSI Relative Strength Index and then you can add that to the chart. Uh, the settings that I've got are just the default settings of length 14 days and the source of the info is the close of each day. So that gives you this information and that can help you to figure out where the highs and the lows are. The other great tool that I've got on, on my chart is uh, 
this one which is called pivot points high low that's another indicator and the settings are 10 10 and what that does is it gives you these uh, high and low points so that you can more easily see where the price reached its peaks and its lows and you see that each peak and low coincides on the relative strength with the peaks and the lows on the graph so you can see when it goes really high uh, that is the point where the price is probably going to reverse or very soon afterwards and then when it goes really low especially below 30 or above 70 then uh, normally there's going to be a reversal in the trend so very useful for figuring out where the price might go next because that is the key to profiting from Bitcoin trading. So what will the price do next? Another great tool is called Bollinger Bands. I uh, just checked to see if these are on my chart already. Yep, I'm just going to put those on. And the settings for the Bollinger Bands are 20, close and two. So quick explanation of what you are seeing now. Uh, these kind of like uh, it's like a cave network <laughs> that you're seeing or uh, a colon uh, but actually it's called a Bollinger Band and the middle line this blue or cyan colored line here is the 20 day moving average and the top and the bottom represent standard deviation uh, and what that means is or what it means graphically is that where the lines are further apart there is more volatility and when the lines narrow that means that there is less volatility so let's just scroll back to the beginning of the year and see if we can use these to predict what is coming up next on the chart kind of backdating the um, or back testing this particular uh, indicator so you see that with Bollinger Bands the price has a tendency of either being high or low so here we see that the price is high and it went towards the line but didn't quite go through there was a bounce that day and it's gone up right to the top of the line and when it's near the top there's a tendency for it to go towards the bottom so here it went to the bottom of the line and you notice as well that here the lines were far, far apart meaning there's a lot of volatility a lot of price movement and then the line started to narrow and when the lines narrow you normally get more of a uh, just a kind of horizontal movement where there's not a lot of price movement but when the lines come close together it normally means there's going to be a breakout one way or the other now the price was high at the top here so when the breakout came it went to the bottom and you can also see that the RSI line here was at the top so it's most likely that when the breakout occurs it's going to go down uh, and then the RSI got right to the bottom here the price was on the bottom red candles mean that the price is going down those days and each candle represents one day because I'm on the one day chart here on the top so when the price was right down at the bottom there's a tendency that it's going to go towards the top of the range and so, sure enough it went towards the top so we saw a little bit of a dip it went towards the middle point uh, where there's the 20 day moving average but then it went upwards and the RSI level at the top moved to the top point here and stayed at the top for quite a while it looked like it was going to come down but then you see that the price bounced off and went up further the RSI went further up resulting in a higher price the price went up and then the RSI started to point down so what do you think happened next 
in fact let's vote now do you think the price went higher or do you think the price went lower vote now on the top right hand corner of the screen and let's have a look what actually happened so scrolling on we did see that the price dropped so congratulations if you got that right the price dropped and the RSI level went down to 43 not a very low level and then it started going up and the price touched the bottom here now we got a long candle wick here on the bottom so this is where it's testing resistance and you see that there is a historical resistance line here uh, here the price went to the same resistance point and bounced up so we got a good bounce up that day and the price went up higher and you can see that the RSI level is going up and the price went up. So Bollinger Bands are a fantastic way to predict which price, uh, which way the price is going to go. So when the bands narrow, a breakout is going to occur. Uh, when it goes further apart, there's more volatility in the price. And you can use these with the RSI to try to figure out where the price is going next. So let's go to present day and see if we can try to predict what's going to happen. Uh, it's a more difficult time to predict at the moment because we've seen this narrowing range and the price got really narrow and the Bollinger Bands narrowed as well. And now we are seeing that they have widened slightly uh, especially widened on the bottom part here whereas the top is pretty flat so where will the next movement go now interestingly we did see this spike that happened yesterday on the 15th of october and the spike went right to the top of this range at uh, just over six thousand eight hundred dollars and then went back finished the day here and today on the 16th the price has hardly changed at all and we're seeing a kind of a plus sign here which is a sign of indecision uh, the price has not moved much at all uh, but it has stayed below the 20-day moving average now the other way that you can use the 20 day moving average with a high degree of success is that let's just scroll back whenever the price goes above the uh, 20 day moving average if you was to buy at this point let's get the ruler out if you was to buy here you saw that it was going up and you sold at the top here where uh, the RSI was at the highest level so maybe you sold here you would have made a 27% gain now conversely if you was to sell here uh, by short selling Bitcoin because it went below the 20 day moving average and you saw that the RSI bottomed out here on the 8th of August you could have made approximately 15 percent so some really good profits can be made with this technique uh, again here we see the price go above the 20 day moving average if you was to buy here and you saw that the rsi started to drop here so maybe you sold here for example you could have made nine percent so this is a very good way to know where to do your trades by being on the daily time frame and looking at the 20 day moving average whenever the price goes below you can short sell and whenever the price goes above you can buy normally make a good profit so here very recently on the 10th of october you could have short sold and let's see how much money you could have made approximately uh, five percent so what we saw happen yesterday was the price went up very briefly let's go on to the uh, one hour chart and you can see that this price movement happened 
in the space of just three hours it all happened in the morning um, so there was not a lot of opportunity to do anything with that and all we've seen since then is the price go straight ahead so what will the price do next looking at the RSI levels we can see that the RSI at the moment is quite low at uh, it's just gone up recently to the middle point but it was very quite low really at 33 so there is a possibility that we are going to see Bitcoin go up to the upside because it's not really been uh, on the upside till uh, since the 24th of July or the 4th of September uh, but these levels are not really high compared to what we've seen in the past so definitely room for the Bitcoin price to move up but we could see more of this range continuing for a little while uh, a few years ago I think it was in 2014 we saw a very similar pattern where there was a big rally uh, at that same time of the year and then it took quite a while for the price to start going back up again but typically in November and December the Bitcoin price does increase so it could be a good opportunity to buy while the price is low uh, and definitely check the links in the video description for details of the recommended exchanges that I can recommend there are exchanges not uh, that are not recommended and part of that part of why I don't recommend certain ones is something to do with USDT USD tether now tether is a so-called stable coin and the price of tether should be uh, one dollar all of the time but recently we've seen the price of tether drop significantly it dropped down to 85 cents uh, it has gone up a little bit it's now at 90 uh, 95.85 cents but it is not the one dollar that uh, it should be and there's quite a few exchanges including Kraken and uh, Bits uh, I forget the name of the other one uh, there's quite a few exchanges that do use USDT instead of actual US dollars euros or pound sterling so definitely be careful about which exchange you use because it might be difficult for you to actually convert back to fiat currencies um, also there's often price differences between the exchanges if we go to uh, Bitcoin USD on um, Bitfinex which is the largest exchange and then we take off the price of um, the same pair on Coinbase then we can see that there are differences in price for example typically the price ranges from either $26 to $78 uh, minus or plus but recently that has been extending to as high as nearly a thousand dollars difference and the reason for that is Bitfinex is not using US dollars um, they're using USDT so there is a big difference as you can see in price and that is why I'm very careful about which exchanges I do recommend because obviously if you make a profit you want to be able to transfer that profit back to US dollars or pounds or euros so just be wary about that so I hope this video helps check out this other video as well that I'm sure you'll love and do subscribe to my channel give the video a thumbs up if you liked the content and I shall see you again soon good luck with your trading and let me know in the comments if you have any questions bye for now